What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. It's occurred to me that there are more updates on my building project on other people's channels than my own, so I feel a little guilty about not having my own done. So before I get into this, a quick shout out to DC Reefer, CJ, Rico, and Matt from Jayo Nation for coming over and introducing my little corner of the reef world to your audiences. I really appreciate it. Right now what's going on is the plumbing and the electric going inside the walls. Once they're all done, we can start to insulate the walls and put up the wall panels. Here you can see a rough end for the bathroom downstairs. The bathrooms so far were probably the most challenging part of this build. It's because we needed to install a separate septic system for this building. This entire area doesn't have a central sewer system, so every property is on septic, but they're all grandfathered in. Because this ground is very clay-like, new septic systems don't ever get approved. So usually what happens is you need to get um, a surface discharge system that's designed by the EPA, which is a lot more expensive. We actually lucked out and we found a small area on the property that was suitable for a septic system. So luckily we got all that approved. I get asked all the time what my plans are for the tanks. And right now, that's still very much up in the air. If I've learned any lesson from the greenhouse, it's that work areas and walkways are really, really important. I'm planning for a minimum of four feet between the tanks and a minimum of six feet in the main aisles. There's gonna be plenty of space for the tanks in a building of this size, so I'm not really gonna worry about it until much, much later. Again, I think people design spaces with too much with tanks in mind. They just want to cram as many tanks as humanly possible into the space and not really give enough consideration to actually working on those tanks. Obviously to each their own, but learning what I have from the greenhouse setup, I longed more for workspace and larger aisles than I did for tank space. One of the architectural features of this building is that it has three large cutouts in the second floor. I love them because it makes the space that much more airy and less claustrophobic overall. And I don't know if anybody knows how to do this, but I think it'd be cool to have a giant mangrove growing that, go, that extends all the way up into the second floor. It's probably impossible, but I thought it would look cool. Up top here, is going to be my studio. And unfortunately, uh, there was no handle on the doors and I couldn't get the, the locking mechanism undone. So unfortunately, I can't show you in there right during this walkthrough, but I'll post this um, a little clip of when that wall wasn't quite so done, just so you get an idea of how large the space is in there. Here's a quick look at the upstairs. Again, you can see the second floor cutouts. It's hard to get a feel for the size, but the upstairs is roughly 4,000 square feet. There won't be any tanks up here, but in addition to the studio, there's going to be a bathroom and a laundry. We decided to put the laundry upstairs to save some floor space for the tanks downstairs. I don't expect to use the laundry that much here, just to basically wash the towels every couple of days. On the other side of this bathroom, it's going to be a kitchen. So when it's time for a lunch break, there's going to be pretty much a break room here for everyone. The rest of the second floor is going to be an open concept, really. I can see down the line some space for desks and maybe a couple cubicles for interns. The stud wall you see here is where the kitchen island is going to go. It looks a little small, but it's actually going to be about 10 feet long and should comfortably seat about 4 or 5. My design philosophy with this building is to have everything be as open and flexible as possible. 
The greenhouse next door has undergone major changes every year since it was built, and it's not possible to really predict everything you might need down the line. A perfect example of this is back in 2002 when we were building it, never once did I think, you know what would be great in this greenhouse? A recording studio to do live sales on YouTube. But here we are. So anyway, there's a reason why there's plenty of unallocated spaces here that we can grow into. Okay, that pretty much does it for this update. Hopefully the next time we do this I can talk more about the actual tanks. Until then, happy reefing.